and in order to make binding now, you, you cannot use this big fiber you need a much smaller fiber, <coughs> which you can bend and make contact there. And if you really want to bind down at the, at the atomic or the animal scale, even this does not work in this kind of sizes of the fiber cell. And for that reason, uh, all, the, all the organisms end with a thin plate here. And for the liver and for the spiders, it's particularly thin, it's only 10 nanometers thick. And you can sort of use the bend this thin plate to make contact to the surface, even at a missed scale. So only by having this hierarchic structure, where the material is elastically soft on all length scales with respect to the kind of deformation it needs to undergo to make contact. Only by having that you will get wood adhesion. Wood adhesion. <coughs> uh, but you cannot make things too delicate. Uh, you cannot make these fibers too long and too thin, so then they will self bind because too little energy to put them together. They will bind that one also back in here, and when, you, when, you, when, this, when they start to bind together like that, the adhesive will fail. <coughs> you see, you see like this. <coughs> This thin plate in the end of these fibers cannot be arbitrarily thin because if it's too thin and too large, you could start to bend it again so it binds to itself maybe or bind to another plate. And again, this binding together will start to make this easy very really bad. And in fact, the guy who won the Nobel Prize for something else before he did that work, he worked a little very briefly on the producing this kind of artificial adhesives. He did so. See this of uh, the fibers made from some polymer. I don't, I don't remember if it was rubber, but I think it's rubber. Um, and when he put it in contact with the flat surface, they start to bind together like an indicator. Like and when that has happened, it doesn't work anymore. It works only it's a good adhesive in this case, but not a bad case. So even this new guy was not good, not intelligent enough to understand this one. So in nature, they have made some tricks in order to avoid this self-binding. For example, on these fibers there, they put some formulations. So you cannot bring them into contact anymore because they are hitting each other with this small steel disc. So this is one interpretation of the reason for this steel disc. And these plates uh, have sometimes also some formulations like that, which will make it hard to self-bind or to bend or to bind another plate. <coughs> this, you are also already seeing that the more heavy the animal is, the more the thinner becomes the fibers and the thinner becomes the plates. <coughs> that is because here you need to find a bigger mass to the substrate and so you need to have better contact and you need to store up less elastic energy in order to make contact. And for that reason you need to make everything thinner, plates smaller and thinner and fibers thinner and then we need this branch structure for, the, for this very light uh, insects. You can have much bigger plates and much thicker fibers and still make some binding. But, but in actual fact, uh, these two are dry adhesive. They don't inject in the fluid at the interface, but here you have to inject the fluid at the interface to form a small capillary bridge between these plates and the substrate. If you don't do that, probably you will, these plates are too big, to, to, too stiff to be able to bind to other surfaces. So here, these guys inject the fluid via the fiber into this contact plate. That's what they just said. The Western fluid in between will get this capillary pressure to the floor, which will have basically a negative pressure inside here, and that's how we can bind it to the rough surface. That's all. This is the book of the fly. They can confirm it to me by the door. This is all this. These are so the hair binding to the substrate of this equation is very beautiful and such all is all very beautiful. And here you have some glass which you can use when you have a very rough surface like bar on the tree. And this is from a little, little different construction, but again you can see the hair. And you can even see some red lines here. Can you slide in I guess? And this was the lizard foot. And here you have the map of this very thin house, branching out into this thinner house and plate, something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If you, if you scale up this to human sizes, you will you put this thing is not impossible, but it really assumes that you have flat surfaces which you never have. Or no, you could not walk on a stone wall. 
Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little about capillary adhesion. I'm going to provide material to this, this problem too. And then after I'm going to tell you about application to the trick for the Cosina case of, of, uh, of capillary adhesion. So if you, keep, you have, if you have two surfaces with surface hardness, you keep it in a humic atmosphere, it will automatically condense water in this in some region where the surfaces are very close to each other or where they touch each other. And you will form capillary objects here, and this capillary objects will, will act as an attraction because you will, if, they, if this fluid wet the surfaces, you will have negative pressure inside here and you will get attraction between the two solids. And this can be very strong this attraction. Uh, I told you yesterday that the negative pressure is given by the surface tension of the fluid divided by the radius of curvature here. And if you have a radius of curvature of 10 nanometer, you get a neg negative pressure of minus, you get pressure of minus 7 megapascal or, or minus 70 atmosphere. So you need a very big force. If you have a lot of such kind of you need a very large force to separate the surfaces. <coughs> and I think you know that if you have smooth glass surfaces, you put a small amount of water in between, it's almost impossible to separate the surfaces. You need to slide them to the other context. Just to separate them like this, it's almost possible. And that's again because of capital pitch, which are strong at the interface. <coughs> and this again has huge number of techn technological applications. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you don't want to have these capital objects, and this is one example. This is in the context of men's structures. This is just a beam, a micrometer-sized beam on the substrate here. And the principle of this beam should be free here, yeah? and it should uh, vibrate in response to some external forces. Uh, but when you produce this, sometimes the beam is attached to the substrate. Uh, we are capital bridges, like in here. Yeah. And it's almost impossible to get rid of these capital bridges. Uh, so, but the way to reduce this effect is to have introduce roughness in these surfaces or to make these surfaces hydrophobic. You have to put some modulated molecules in the surfaces which convert the surfaces from hydrophilic to hydrophobic. Uh, then you could avoid this mechanism. But this is a very severe problem in, uh, in producing lens structures. This I'll tell you. So uh, the theory which I developed for this is based on, on what I showed you on this figure here. So in the normal humid atmosphere, you will spontaneously form capillary bridges, even if you don't add any water or fluid from outside. And uh, uh, you know, the thickness, if this would be flat surfaces here, look at the flat. The thickness of this fluid layer is given by what we call the Kelvin radius times the cosine of, of the, the contact angle. So if you have a fluid which wipes the surface, this becomes two here. One plus one is two. <coughs> and uh, the Kelvin radius is determined by thermal equilibrium between the gas phase and the fluid in these capillary bridges. And I will show you how you can derive this equation. This is called the Kelvin equation. It relates the radius of curvature of the fluid in this case here to the relative, relative humidity. This is the separation <coughs> pressure of, say, water. And this is the actual pressure of water in the atmosphere. And this is called relative humidity. So this radius here is determined by, by the relative humidity, by the temperature, the surface tension of the water and the volume of the water molecule. And given that we know that inside this capital body we will we'll have a negative pressure which is basically like this given by this uh, equation over there, <coughs> which I derived yesterday. Laplace, Laplace equation. And now we need to know where will we have fluid inside. And here I'll use my theory. I basically say there will be fluid everywhere inside where the separation of the surfaces is, uh, it has to be larger than zero because if it's zero at contact, I cannot have any liquid. Um, and it has to be smaller than this Kelvin length here. So everywhere where this condition is satisfied, I will put fluid. And I can determine that area where I put the fluid by just integrating this, this probability distribution of it, it separation, I integrate that from 
zero plus, plus means I remove the contact error to this length dk, which is the height of this uh, tabular width. And then I just say that the battery force will be given by this negative pressure in the fluid times the area where I have the fluid. So I apply this to some semiconductor surfaces, not semiconductor, poly polysilicon, the si silicon dioxide surfaces, so oxidized uh, silicon surfaces. This is what is typically used in this MEMS application. And there are very small bits of only 2.3 micrometer, 2.3 nanometer. And here is plotted the work of adhesion. This is a force to separate the surfaces. Uh, the red dot is function of the relative humidity. So 100% humidity, it makes it means that you have plotted water everywhere. And zero humidity, you have no capital release at all. At all. And the uh, calculation, there is no finished parameter here, everything is known, surface hardness is known. My calculation gives the blue symbols and the uh, experiment in the beginning it came very well, but after it does not agree. And again, this is a finite size effect. I want to explain it because in this context finite size effects are very important. So my my calculation is for the infinite system. Uh, and the experiment is for final system. If I take a final system, <coughs> if I take a final system, I will always have at least one contact point. Or the general more than one contact point. But, uh, even, uh, even if there's no, always no attraction, there will always be one contact point. In that contact point, on that contact point, I can form one capital H. Since I have a final system here, it will always be <laughs> Finite work of adhesion. Work of adhesion is uh, basically the work to remove the surface, divided by the surface area. Uh, that gives the work of adhesion, having the dial. That will always be finite because I have to do work against this single capital bridge which I have here. In my case, I have an infinite system. So even if I have one capital bridge with a, what I have attraction, when I divide by an infinite area, I get zero. So this deviation from between two and the here is related to this figure shows the same system I showed you, the contact area, the unit of the nominal contact area, this is the total projective surface area. And here I've plotted the principal function of humidity, but instead of humidity, I've plotted the function of this uh, Kelvin sickness. So this is a height of the capital of the when the height of the capital bridge is very large, then I'm out here, I have fluid everywhere at the interface, and in that case, when I, when I uh, uh, decrease this uh, parameter, I get larger and larger, the, the capital bridge becomes more narrow, and I get larger and larger negative pressure in capital bridges, and that's why you have an additional attraction which will increase the area of the contest. <coughs> But when I reach this point here, and, and if I have fluid anywhere, I will follow this green line here. When I reach this point here, I can no longer have fluid anywhere at the interface, because the separation starts to be larger in some places, given by this distance here. And then the attraction coming from capital bridges starts to fall. And finally, at, uh, when I'm over here, almost the right condition is sort of, the area of contact is determined just by the external load, because I'm also applying an external load in this calculation. <coughs> I used 4 megapascal external contact. Excuse me, question. This really shows the dry and wet area as a function of the same parameter. I told you at the beginning, you have fluid everywhere in the face. Everything is wet, so the relative wet area is 1. And then it rapidly dropped when you lower the humidity or lower the height of this capital bridges. And the uh, and the dry dry area increases the blanket uh, so because the dry is one minus the wet. <coughs> this what I showed you now was for 
elastic to the stiff material. If you have elastic to the soft material, something very interesting happens, which is illustrated in this figure. That uh, these capillary bridges which form when you have elastic to the soft material, it will attract the, the two solids together here. And this attraction can be so large that there is like a transition when you go from this situation to this situation where when the negative pressure can get large enough, it pulls the two solids into contact. You will end up with this situation shown here. <coughs> and that's what I that's what came out of the calculation. Of course, when you know the answer, when you know the answer, it's easy to understand. But before I did the calculation, I did not understand that that would happen. And but that's what is shown here. Here's shown again the area of, of real contact, the function of the thickness of this fuel layer, Kelvin uh, Kelvin uh, height or thickness of this capillary fluid here. And you can see that when you lower the thickness, you increase this negative pressure inside here, and suddenly the contact has started to increase. And that's because you go away from this towards this situation over here. <coughs> and the soft the material is the earlier this effect happens. So you come to stiff material, it's the same thing that happens. But if you have soft material, it happens. And this effect of course, even more separate experiment, I didn't know about this experiment when I did my calculation. This is for wiper brakes. You know, the stuff you have to take away water from your window in the car when it's raining. Uh, and this was some experiment where it was they put water on the glass, and then they stopped to put water on the glass, and they look at the friction between the rubber and the glass during this wiping. And you can see when you have water, you have rather low friction because the water enters a lubricant. Many places you have seen water field between the rubber and the glass. We have already discussed that the water becoming the friction. <coughs> but then when it starts to get dry, you have a region here, which this, in this community, by the end of this, was called a tech rubber, where you have very high friction, where you have 1.2. Uh, and here the surface is just a little bit. And here over it's dry. So you have higher friction when the surface is a little wet compared to when it is dry. And the reason is that when it's a little wet, you get some negative, you get so high negative pressure in this capillary bridges that it pulls the rubber into better contact with the substrate, uh, and then you have after when it becomes a little dry. When it's completely dry, the contact rate is determined by the applied pressure. Uh, but here you have this additional contribution from the capillary bridges, which make contact even larger than you would expect without <coughs> so this is my last part of this presentation. Um, I will just say very few words about adhesion involving tree, tree frogs. Uh, this is a figure of a tree frog. It's a quarter, middle, some millimeter cross section. And you can see it consists of hexagonal units here, the hexagonal cells. And the being used, you have a fluid. I think mainly water, but it's a, a fluid. <coughs> Here's a magnified picture. <coughs> these are this region which are empty or filled with fluid between the cells. And in fact, if you have good eyes, you need to see that these cells appear also in the market, that you have smaller cells on top of a big cell, and you have smaller channels between those than you have and then these channels here. This is a magnified picture which one is smaller. Oh, so the tree frog adhered to the surfaces using capillary bridges. And uh, this is the way I picture this. So this is a tree frog and this is one of these cells which has maybe uh, I've got 10 micrometer or whatever, uh, 100 micrometer diameter here. Yeah? And you have fluid in between there. Yeah? And if this is a wetting fluid, uh, this could be a stone surface, for example. When you make contact here, this fluid will automatically flow out and fill this space here. And the reason for that is that as long as the separation here is smaller than the separation which you have between the blocks here, you will have a more negative pressure here. The, the, when you, the discus is here, you have a radius of curvature here of the mm -hmm. discus, which is smaller than the, half this separation here. And then you will have a more negative pressure here, 
then we will have inside this fluid when it is in this cavity cell. And then it will automatically, because of this pressure difference, it will flow out. And it, and it will start to move only when the local separation here becomes the same as the mix of this uh, cuts. That's the data structure here. When this gives here at the time of this mix, then this flow will stop. That will be the driving force for this happening. So this is what I think happened. There was a continuous flow out of the fluid at the interface uh, coming from the difference in the Kelvin, Kelvin class here, which we have over here and here. And in this case, it doesn't flow anymore. It's the same Kelvin class here, here and there. And then once you in this kind of picture, it's that if the insert, if the table has to move, uh, during movement up, some fluid will flow back again. But when you start to separate, the separation here will finally become larger than this separation you have here, and then you will have Kelvin pressure, here, which is lower in this fluid inside here than it is here. And then uh, the fluid will go back again. So in that way, the triple could save some fluid, uh, which could be good. And uh, here I have only one one additional interpolation, I told you I would, I would show you how to derive this Kelvin equation. <coughs> so the Kelvin equation uh, relates the radius of such a meniscus to the, to the vapor pressure of this fluid, the atmosphere. And there's a saturated vapor pressure, that's the vapor pressure you would have when you have a flat the fluid surface in contact with its thermodynamic contact with its vapor phase that separates the vapor phase and this is this kind of equation but this here is a molecular value of one molecule <coughs> and the only thing basically you need to know is that uh, that's taken to the right is that the chemical potential of a gas phase molecule is given by this relation here but this here is some reference pressure I think you're going to need quantum mechanics to already determine what this area is, but it doesn't, here it doesn't matter what it is. <coughs> and then you just need to take to make use of the fact that the chemical potential in terms of equilibrium must be the same everywhere. The chemical potential for a molecule inside here must be the same as the chemical potential for a molecule out in the gas phase. <coughs> and uh, so if you first take a flat fluid surface. Then we know that this is the uh, uh, chemical. This is chemical potential for a molecule in the gas phase. We we'll put in the separated pressure uh, here, so, and that must then be the same as the, the chemical potential for a molecule inside the liquid. <coughs> if you look at the tabular bridge now, it can exist also when you look when you have a relative pressure of of uh, in the gas phase here, which is smaller than the separation gas. That's why you can have capital bridges in equilibrium with with the atmosphere even when you're low, when you're not in separation uh, uh, pressure of these molecules. So this equation here we will obtain the fact that the chemical potential is here must be the same as outside. And then in order to get this equation over here, you just need to combine this this with this last equation here. And this last equation <coughs> just tells you that when you bring a molecule into the fluid here, you have to do a work against the pressure difference. But you have a negative pressure inside here. When you bring it into the fluid with a flat surface, there's no pressure difference. You have the same pressure outside as you have inside. But when you go into this capillary bridge, you have to do a fluid work, which is just given by, by the pressure times the volume of the molecule. So this Two quantities are related to yeah, this additional time. If you have to make this equation, you get the catalytic equation, which tells you basically the size of capital objects when you are a particular relative humidity to something like that.
The diagram from Fuller and Tabo, yeah. and which was a maximum. Yes. Can you yes. tell us something about this? Yes. It's not probably a. Yes. Yes, I think it's a maximum. 
that's enough for me. And uh, Do you think this is physical or? Uh, yeah. Because I have a some paper that this was wrong. But no, it's not, it's not wrong. Okay. That's good news because uh, perhaps it's something that can be used uh, in order to maximize the vision. You mean you are thinking about this much more Yeah. Yeah. This is because when you are very elastic, you are very soft, solid, you can, and you deform the bottom surface to make contact everywhere. If you can neglect, you can neglect this term here, this is where it's called, it's called left behind it. Then the area of real contact will be larger on the rough surface than on the smooth surface. Because the surface area is larger on the rough surface compared to the smooth surface. And so in my so I always get this maximum term of material uh, when it's under the right condition, when it's very less to very soft, solid. So in my in my opinion this maximum here is related to the fact that the uh, surface area, when you increase the roughness, becomes larger and larger. So here we can try surface with one surface area, but here is the surface area. So this term becomes larger. It's larger than it is for the flat surface. A is larger than A0. Because here A is a true contact area, which is the not projected area, but the one which takes into account that you have curvature. That people have tried to explain it with other, with other approaches too. Actually, also, there's some speculation that it might be due to, you know, yeah, <coughs> might be due to exactly this effect. This enhancement uh, coming to pull off us from, from such, such uh, uh, rapid events that we want to detect it. This was, uh, this was suggested in this paper that it would also enhance. But this is a dynamic process. Yeah, but it will depend on the. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's if you make a quasi static process, probably this. Yeah, yeah, but this, uh, even if you put it very slowly, you will have. You could have. A continuous the the tensile stress in front of it mm -hmm. become large, so large that you will have local interfacial detachment happening in front of the gravity. And then the energy to break propagates this cap. It's not just the energy to break once at any place, it will also include the energy which is dissipated in this elastic waves of the day. And that will also enhance. Uh, this will not happen on the flat surface. If you have a flat surface, you have only the reflective. If you move slowly, you will not have any emission of any of the waves. So there's no rapid happening. You move slowly. You pull up slowly. Because in this case, you could have a rapid happening happening even if you move this. So that's also a possibility for enhancing the addition. Uh, but the surface area is a guaranteed effect. Whether this happens or not, it has to be studied more detail. Because it's not completely clear that with this detached here, instead of variating this energy, it, could, it can help it to make it to detach other activities. And so it's not all the energy in this local detachment is not lost as variation, but it helps it to break other ones. If that's the case, then uh, this fact is not important, or it will be strongly suppressed. And my own thinking about this is that most of this graphic energy, which was called here, will actually help it, like other ones, other than getting variated here. But this requires more work. I'm starting to try to do more work. We're trying to look in the world for dynamic scavation, whether this kind of thing is happening. Except the toe pad, uh, does the belly of the tree frog uh, has any influence to the adhesion? The, the bending of what? The, the belly of the of the tree frog. Tree, tree frog. The bending of the surface of the. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so if you have big roughness, long weapons roughness, you need, of course you need to the tool needs to adjust itself to uh, to the long weapons roughness or the large amount of roughness. And in order to do that, it's also very, very soft. It too bad, and with respect to long range perturbation, are rather soft. So you can just the weight, maybe, of the animal or whatever. And, uh, yeah. So the bending, the bending on that surface is very important on a very hard surface. To make contact. Yeah, 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 it was 
not really, uh, it was not really 100 percent. Uh, if you put 100 percent, it, 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 it means that you have water everywhere in some sense, and the capital of which disappeared. Uh, so when you reach very high humidity, here's about surface, and here's the other surface. <coughs> When you have very high humidity, you have to fill then this Kelvin length is so high that you put what you fill up with fluid everywhere. And now the price of the fluid is determined by the end points. So here you will have now temperature like that and, and that. So if you increase the humidity even more, what will happen is that this will move out and you will get a little smaller area, a little larger. Right, yes, yes. So now you have negative pressure inside there, which is determined by the by the, end, the range of curvature. In this case, the end here. And if you go towards 100 percent humidity, this gets bigger and bigger. And at 100 percent humidity, the the gas phase is in equilibrium with the water on the flat surface. So in that case, this you get water everywhere. So this curvature goes towards zero. So the range of curvature goes towards infinity. So, I did, there was no point at 100% of the there was a point very close to 100% of the but it was not 100% of the minute. And very close to 100% of the minute, you have fluid everywhere in the place, and the negative pressure in it is determined by the radius, or the distance at the edges of the number. Is your theory taking into account the velocity of contact and the direction of contact? I mean, because always shows the velocity? Yeah, I mean the, the trailer contact. Uh, the dynamical process. <coughs> and the addition the addition experiment always assume that you go in and out in a vertical direction. Only direct. direct. And that and also in some sense uh, slow. Uh, I told you I did, told you yesterday in my first presentation that if you have rubber, for example, uh, you need to go very, very slowly in order to remove this space of energy get close to the cracking inside the rubber. We are using silicon rubber. Silicon rubber is almost perfect elastic material. You need to actually you need to pull rather high velocity in order to go, in order to get some uh, dissipation close to the plastic. But if you take most other normal rubbers, already you can already it already when this moves maybe the velocity 10 to minus 10 meters per second, which is a very, very small velocity. Even already at those velocities you start to get dissipation in the rubber close to the plastic because the rubber has a very wide distribution of relaxation times, and some of them are very, very, very long. And they give you any expression even at very low effective velocity. Yeah, I mean, from the experimental point of view, it's probably difficult, but I mean, in your theory, it could be. No, I, no, I don't. Uh, this theory is for normal contact. If you start to slide, you also build up some tendency of size and like that. This is not included. I remember some paper that you wrote in the June of, of this condensed matter, which you, where you treated also the problem of the, 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 the some certain sense of dynamics. With, uh, I by, by, uh, mm, you studied the dynamical problem. Yes. I remember some time yeah. scale and so on. Yeah. So uh, uh, perhaps not the sliding by the dynamics. Uh, uh, you have already studied the dynamics. Uh, yeah, I studied, but uh, I'm not using. Uh, which I'm telling about here. I remember was in the field of the uh, uh, Yeah. There was something. Uh, yeah, we discussed, yeah, I discussed the field of that, yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay, thank you.